to this videos? If we make 5000 likes to this video, we will implode more patriotic news. Thank you. When leftists said Trump did something awful to boy in wheelchair, new video proves how wrong they are. President Trump met with the victims of Obamacare July 24 to talk about how Obamacare has been hurting American families. According to the White House, he met with four families who talked about how they have been struggling with skyrocketing premiums, denied access, restrictions, and low reimbursements rates due to Obamacare's failing infrastructure. Among those he met was a little boy in a wheelchair, three-year-old Monty Weir, who has spin a bifida. The Weir family had great difficulty negotiating with insurance companies and clinics due to rapid changes in their Obamacare plans. President Trump met with all of the families, but an edited video made the rounds of him seeming to ignore little Monty while he reached for the president's attention. This of course incensed those on the left, such as Harry Potter author J.K. Rowling, who was nothing short of hysterical on Twitter. Rowling is totally unhinged. She's talking about this video, the video was edited to make the president look bad. We all know President Trump, besides being a very tender-hearted man, loves kids he has five kids of his own and eight grandchildren who he dotes on. The real unedited video proves that this little boy got plenty of the president's attention in fact, little Monty was the first person President Trump greeted. The president even knelt down to get on his level, check it out here, J.K. Rowling could have figured this out with two minutes of research, and she still hasn't taken her first tweets down. The left only sees what it wants to believe but it's a sad day when they use sick little babies to promote their campaign of hate against the president. Share 50,000 times to end this misinformation on our president, and show what a great guy he really is. H slash T White House, Daily Caller Ben Carson just told the world what he thinks about Trump, and the rhinos are. Secretary of Housing and Urban Development Dr. Ben Carson, who has been a background figure amid the hubbub surrounding the White House, recently gave an interview with the Washington Examiner. The retired neurosurgeon described his role in the administration and his relationship with the president. Carson gave his thoughts on the president's tweets, saying he was sympathetic and supportive of him. I think, the White House has, done well given the level of frustration. I mean, can you imagine you've been elected president and the only thing anyone wants to talk about is Russia? Can you imagine how frustrating that is? People say he's wild with his tweets and things. I think he's pretty restrained under the circumstances. This is in stark contrast to other Republican leaders who have been critical of President Trump's favorite means of communicating with the American people. This includes the likes of Lindsey Graham. When asked if he thought President Trump's tweets were too reactionary, Carson simply said, I don't know if you could say he reacts too much. I would just say he is, perhaps, more reactionary than I might be. Carson went on to describe his relationship with President Trump, who he speaks to every week, we're philosophically very well aligned. He knows a lot about housing. It's amazing how much he knows about it. But he's also a very kind hearted person. You may not see that sometimes because he's reacting to things that other people are doing and saying. He sometimes reacts rather vigorously. Honestly, it's great to hear someone in D.C. has the president's back, especially after some Republicans have become so critical of him. Thanks Dr. Carson. I'm glad we can depend on you. Share 10,000 times so all the rhinos know we support those who support our president. H slash T Washington Examiner All over after failing on Obamacare again, McConnell did what nobody expected. Last night was a heartbreaking night for every Republican who was hoping to see Obamacare finally get thrown in the trash and replaced with something better. Last night, Republicans failed a tiny repeal vote by one single person. After the final heartbreaking loss, Majority Leader Mitch McConnell knew what he had to do. He took the floor, looked his colleagues in their faces and, Mitch McConnell cried on the Senate floor. This was not a fake cry, either. No stage tears. This was a man who was heartbroken and also realizes that his time as majority leader of the Senate is up. You can watch him choke over his words. 
The saddest part of all was watching Senator McConnell tell all the Republicans, it's time to move on. You know, the thing is that I actually agreed with almost everything Mitch said in that speech. In fact, if anyone is to blame for this loss, it was the Democrats who obstruct everything and the three Republicans who voted number GOP since. Susan Collins, Maine, Lisa Murkowski, Alaska, and John McCain, Arizona. So, now we have the names of the Republicans who refused to come together for a repeal that was so small they called it skinny Obamacare. Should these three get re-elected? Comment your answer and share this out everywhere. Right before Republicans finally repealed Obamacare, McCain did something unforgivable. Last night was the Republicans' last big hurry to repeal and replace Obamacare. In fact, all they wanted to do was at least take out some part of Obamacare to get started. It looked like they were actually going to do it. At the last moment, with the clock counting down to midnight, Republicans looked like they had the 50 votes they needed. Mike Pence was on standby to cast the tie-breaking vote. That's when it happened. John McCain cast the vote that saved Obamacare. That's right Republicans ended up failing to even scratch Obama's health care plan. It was so sad to see them lose 49-51. The only three Republicans who voted against it were GOP cents. Susan Collins, Maine, and Lisa Murkowski, Alaska, and, of course, John McCain. Of course, the Democrats cheered as McCain saved their failed health program. They were expecting to lose. Tonight, he was their hero. The really sad part is, this bill was so tiny, McCain should have helped get us the win. Hell, even the Deems could have voted in favor of this, because it barely even touched Obamacare. But, this is where we live now. Paul Ryan once called Obamacare the law of the land now, and today John McCain made that a reality. Is it time for McCain to get out of the Senate? If so, share this everywhere and comment Get Out. Leaker plugged the latest Comey confidant to just get busted will stun the nation. A new report from Circa claims that FBI General Counsel James A. Baker is under a criminal investigation with the Department of Justice for allegedly leaking classified information to the media. Baker is friends with former FBI Director James Comey and was reportedly giving then still employed Comey legal advice following the meetings Comey had with President Trump in the Oval Office. Baker was appointed FBI General Counsel by Comey in 2014 after a long career in the intelligence services. Three sources speaking to Circa under the condition of anonymity said that Baker is a prime suspect in Attorney General Jeff Sessions' leak investigation. Earlier this week Sessions said he would be making an announcement about the leak investigation in the near future. This news is only just breaking, so many details will be following, and will keep you in the loop. But so far, it looks like we might have another major leaker down, and from the FBI no less. Share 50,000 times to get this out before the media buries it. H slash T circa. Right in the middle of Ann Coulter's speech, liberals stood up and showed their true colors. It seemed like a normal day at Politico in Los Angeles yesterday. The sun was out, the birds were chirping, and Ann Coulter was gearing up to kick some liberal a dollar in an epic debate. Then it all went to hell in a handbasket, thanks to a bunch of crazy liberals. Two liberals stood up and started to salute Adolf Hitler. Are these two just insane or do they actually want to go out and murder the Jews? It's gotta be one of the two, because, as a Jew myself, I think there is one very simple way to spot a real Nazi, if you dress like a Nazi and act like a Nazi and salute like a Nazi, and shout Sieg Heil like a Nazi, you are probably a Nazi. Yep. I don't think many people are gonna deny that basic fact. Hell. I actually gave them multiple qualifiers to be Nazis, which is generous. Still, these two managed to fit all of them. So, is it okay that young liberals are becoming Nazis? I sure don't think so. I wanna know from you guys, though. Comment your answer and help share this article and video out to everyone.